Welcome back, guys. Happy New Year. Okay, we are going to be looking at your 2021 report via your zodiac sign to see what can be coming up, warning dates, transformations, the unexpected, and the beautiful growth within the domain of both Saturn and Jupiter with that conjunction that just did transpire on the 21st of December, 2020. Now Saturn transited into Aquarius on the 17th of January and the conjunction point, as I mentioned, occurred on the 21st of December at zero degrees Aquarius. Now Saturn spent approximately 2.5 years in Capricorn and we did previously have the nodes in both Cancer and Capricorn. And I am seeing towards the end of 2020 with the full moon in Cancer and the heavy Capricorn placements in January, these things are bouncing off in a karmic test to get that foundation right, to really get that accountability there so that all that we've learned we can apply it in this given situation within the age of Aquarius to get the best out of that astrology. Saturn connects to rules, discipline, responsibility, maturity, structure, challenges, restriction, enduring, death, the unknown and endings, but it's really like a quality system to make sure that we're ticking all those boxes, learning those lessons, taking that direct accountability. Um, and it, it's almost like the harsh karmic energy, but there's benefits in that. It's the lessons like a teach they teach us to really put that best foot forward, that if we do such with Jupiter, we can get the very best out of those placements. They can link to rights and responsibilities, obligations, false sense of freedom and self-management. But it's really that self-mastery that it's going to teach us. And especially when it does go retrograde this year, it's a time to reflect upon what we've learned, what we've implemented and as it goes direct to then make those changes. Theoretically, Saturn is at home in Aquarius. It's its natal ruler. Now, as I mentioned, Aquarius feels quite at home with Saturn. We also have the subcategory of Uranus being linked to it. That connects to the 12th house. So we have both the axis of the 11th and the 12th house themes coming through. Subject matters linking to Uranus and Taurus this year will be coming up because we have three squaring aspects. We also have at the beginning of January, Uranus and Taurus going stationary direct on the 1st and direct by the 14th. So sudden changes in those areas can be coming up um, in a very unexpected way. Aquarius really is the humanitarian of the zodiac sign, you know, wanting to make the world better, looking at those social institutions that aren't working, transforming them, changing them up. The mantra is, I know, and the tarot card uh, is really linked to, with Aquarius, the star card in the tarot. The great connection of time. Saturn requires us to utilize our energy effectively, merge with that 11th house placement with where it's falling in your birth chart, which I will discuss in this video, to get the best out of the situation. And the yin yang, the push pull energy that will be coming up is Uranus and Taurus making squaring aspects to Saturn in Aquarius. So what themes can we have coming up with Saturn in Aquarius? Definitely the energy of responsibility and accountability, and it can be very karmic if we do not follow suit with it. Now with Uranus and Taurus, it can cause nervous energy, um, especially when it relates to anything of the tactile financial related dynamics. And again, it will very much depend upon where it's situated in your chart, which I will mention. So with that, both with the 11th and the 12th house, this push-pull psychology surrounding the situations you're doing, it can be quite a burden. So having to really self-master, having to be extremely organized, and it's almost like, okay, we can see the blessings with Jupiter and Saturn being directly linked together, but what we're going to do to make those things happen, but not biting off more than we can chew, you know, burning that midnight hour, <laughs> hours, so to speak, you know, waking up at the crack of dawn to make that hope and dream come true. Um, really taking the direct steps of accountability with Saturn. And yes, with the sudden changes, it's almost the intuitive side, the house of our hidden enemies is going to be our psychology, really. What potentially could we expect? We could expect very much philosophies to come up, humanitarianism, scientific revolution, music, dance, arts, group activities, 
um, more conducive relationships. There can be this notion coming up in 2021 and beyond where we have tribe and pack mentality. So initially we will need to adjust to the energy of Aquarius. Uh, most, if you do um, study zodiac signs, Aquarius, um, when they're born and they're growing into that energy, initially do feel like the black sheep of the family. They have very, um, very firm ideals. They really do fight for the underdog. So, you know, initially it can feel like they're on the outside with those burdens and responsibilities. As we move into this, a lot of us can embody some of that frequency and it can feel very foreign and alienating initially. But again, with the psychology of the 12th house, we do need to really have a goal in mind. That can be for the bigger picture, where we are learning to um, have alliances, learning to work together. And it can be due to circumstances that do happen in our own lives personally, or on a wider scale, a global situation that is pulling us together to make us directly work with each other. The old theme of there's no I in team. So, you know, <laughs> yes, initially pack mentality can come through, but then understanding that for survival it will be there's a no I in team and really being open to that transformation. So I do see a lot of alliances. I do see a lot of people bridging gaps, finding unique ways to work with each other. Um, this can be in collaborations. It can be um, to do with uh, wider group situations. However it's going to play out, it's it's really, it's almost like we're in the Middle Ages moving to the Modern Ages. So we're the paved way um, in this point in time where, yes, in astrology, some do deem this as the recession, but there's the separate energy of the steps that we're taking to move out of this. There can be beautiful aspects. With Jupiter mid-year, it is moving and retrograding back into Pisces. Again, it will be very Uranian energy our psychology, you know, time to reflect upon that. With our growth, are we on point? Do we need to look at something differently? Are we getting stuck in our heads? Are we putting our actual action and best foot forward? That will be the time that for a lot of us, it can be a little bit testing, but it's deeply informative also because we will have the time to assess such. So before I mention how this will affect your zodiac sign, I will mention the key dates that we need to mark on our calendar. And that is for Saturn and Aquarius will be direct between the 1st of January through to May the 23rd. Um, by that point, all of your actions, especially when it does link to Jupiter, and I will mention Jupiter dates as well, we will have approximately six months really to get a buckle down and get these things done. So I really did say moving into January, it will be really hit the ground running to monopolize upon the Saturn Jupiter energy to get the best out of your chart. Now it will be going retrograde from May the 23rd and it is at 13 degrees Aquarius and it will stay retrograde until October the 11th. So you can find frustrations and reflection upon that accountability from a karmic point of view around that time and then applying the changes as it goes direct from October the 11th at six degrees until January 2022. That will be at 11 degrees. Now, Scorpio, for you guys, this year you do have both Saturn and Jupiter hitting your fourth house placement. And this can be um, this can be a very beneficial social location. There can be a lot of responsibilities linking to this when it does come to um, any home-based businesses because it's very home oriented. It can be growth and expansion. It can be your home suddenly becoming a social hub, so to speak, or more people coming into it. It's also your routine and how you're navigating around potentially family, children, uh, work-related dynamics, really managing those things. This can also be if you're choosing to move or renovate. Again, a lot of energy surrounding such, but it is our psychological foundation. It can be domestic issues, endings, transformations, but within the sphere of if you're wanting to purchase a home, this can be a time in which, yes, that potentially can become a possibility due to the fact that you have both Saturn and Jupiter there. 
You also do have um, the ability to have good leeway if you're putting your best foot forward and doing everything you can to transform some of those areas from January moving to mid-year. Now, we will have the retrograde effect um, of Saturn around May 23rd, which doesn't mean movement won't happen in these areas. It's more that we will be reflecting upon, okay, take, taking a bit of a, a step back, having an assessment till October, might be paperwork related. It might be looking at those things, what we would need to change to, in order to have X, Y, and Z happen. So it's a quality system, if anything. But if we do absolutely nothing and we've got Saturn and Jupiter there, when it does come to home-related dynamics, then it will become more karmic and um, imbalanced really. There is a place where we can actually learn a great deal about structure, conduciveness, working together as a team, um, and it not being all on you, uh, but definitely it can be very much an assessment in your life of looking at these bigger pictures and transforming those areas of the fourth house. Now, Saturn in Aquarius transits before we move on to Jupiter. We are having Saturn in Aquarius direct from the 1st of January till May the 23rd, where it will go stationary retrograde on May the 23rd at 13 degrees Aquarius through till October the 11th at 6 degrees Aquarius. Now, the direct motion of this will be from October the 11th at 6 degrees through to January 2022 at 11 degrees. Okay, as for Jupiter, now I'm really looking at the charts and with these placements, we did have, as I mentioned, the conjunction point with Saturn and Jupiter, and that was on the 21st in December 2020. Now, what we have moving forward are some beautiful aspects, but we really need to monopolize upon it. And this is gonna take a great deal of accountability with that vision. So with Jupiter, it's showing the vision, it's giving us the energy, it's giving us the opportunities, but we will need to take direct accountability. And we do have a window pocket. Now in the initial stages moving into 2021, we have most of the planets direct. We have Uranus and Taurus going stationary direct by the first and out of shadow by the 14th. So with Jupiter and Saturn, we have until about the end of January, and then even by mid-January, we're going to be in shadow stage of Mercury going retrograde, and it will be in the house of Aquarius. So it will both link to these big boys in the sky and reflecting upon what all this energy means between Saturn and Jupiter and what we're going to do with it, what some of these things are. And very much, as I mentioned before, with Aquarius, it can feel like the black sheep of the family. It can be pack and tribe mentality. It's wanting to have this innovation and change and it's all for the people, but sometimes we can feel like the odd one out. So adjusting to this can take a little bit of time. So it's perfect that we will be having a Mercury retrograde. Um, you know, going into shadow by about mid-January and then retrograde by the end of January. So moving into 2021, a bit of reflection on all the placements we hold within our zodiac signs where Aquarius lands, which I have mentioned and I'll continue to, how it's going to affect us tuning into it. Now, contracts, signing of anything, can there can be complications. There can also be additional information coming towards you, especially when it does come to group endeavors and growth. It can be not the best time to launch projects. Far better to, if you are going to launch anything relating to Aquarius with both Saturn and Jupiter and those placements, better to wait till after Mercury Direct. Okay, so the must-know dates with Jupiter. Jupiter is making two transitional points. One, it will be in Aquarius until June 20th, where it does move into Pisces, and we will get a very different energy. And around these dates, it's very important to pay attention to what some of these themes are, because Jupiter will be entering Aquarius again uh, towards, towards the 1st of January, which can be taking on those themes, and it will be at zero degrees. So initially, we will have Jupiter direct from January the 1st at 2 degrees Aquarius until June the 20th. Now it's pretty much a month after um, Saturn would have already been well and truly retrograde. We still have Jupiter direct, so it will land on June the 20th. Then with the retrograde, it's retrograde between the 20th of June at 2 degrees Pisces. Keep an eye on those dates till October the 18th at 22 degrees Aquarius. Now as it moves direct, 
on October the 18th. It will be in Aquarius until the end of the year where it will yet again enter. So we have the retrograde point at the middle of the year. As I mentioned, pay attention to those dates and that should hold you through. Now, we'll talk about how it's going to link to your zodiac sign, what these things can be. Okay, Scorpio, let's have a look at your chart and what potentially can be coming up during um, Jupiter's transits, both in Aquarius and Pisces. Now, between the 1st of January... It will be in Aquarius until June the 20th, where it will move into Pisces. Now, for you, you'll have themes pretty much from the 1st of January through to about the 19th of June in Aquarius in your fourth house placement. So anything you're wanting to do to do with your daily routine, um, your psychological foundation, any domestic issues, endings, tying up loose ends, renovating, for instance, um, really trying to balance your routine. You can also find that you will be more open to people coming into your home. It can become a social hub. So you might be, you know, upgrading your home, making more room. Um, you know, even your day-to-day -day life may be busy where you really need to fine tune that to get the best out of your daily activity so paying attention to that during the air until about June the 19th where it does retrograde into Pisces and then there can be creative ventures there can be luxuries and although you will be reflecting upon those things if you have been moving house or wanting to buy a house or doing anything to that degree home related there can be major things surrounding this this can also be getting um, a secondary property uh, for rental purposes or, you know, working from home, especially with the axis of fourth and fifth house placement. So between June the 20th at two degrees Pisces um, until October, uh, pretty much the 17th, it moves back into Aquarius on the 18th at 22 degrees Aquarius. You're going to have time during that retrograde effect in Pisces to reflect upon children, romance, luxury, um, any creative projects, um, hobbies, turning into businesses. Uh, it's a good time at that point to also look at your diet, um, your health and your well-being, being Pisces. And being that we do have Neptune and Pisces to look at how that retrograde effect is affecting you, um, you know, where are you in alignment? Is something um, that you're wanting to move towards? Are the direct steps being taken or is it a dream, you know, Neptune and Pisces energy? Now, during that time, do play close, play, pay close attention due to the fact in 2023, we are going to be having Jupiter and Pisces. So it can give you a little bird's eye view into some of the themes that can come up in 2022. Now, as it goes direct by October, it's then changing that trajectory and really shifting things about so that you can get the best out of that situation. Let's have a look at Uranus and Taurus. Now, it will be stationary shadow by the 1st of January 2021 at 6 degrees Taurus. It then will be direct by the 14th of January at 6 degrees Taurus. Now, the, the direct motion will be pretty much from January 14th um, through to August the 20th, where it will be at 14 degrees Taurus. So we have that pocket between January and August where we can have that direct movement uh, with anything that we've reflected upon, all those changes that may have occurred. And the changes can be coming up in the first two weeks of January. And although we do have three squaring aspects this year with Saturn and Uranus and Taurus, I am feeling, you know, although major astrologers are discussing the fact that we're going to have three major shifts when it does come to Uranus and Taurus squaring Saturn in Aquarius, I really do feel the beginning of the year is going to give us a theme of what potentially can come through. And I will discuss dates, um, you know, very much linking into these energies, uh, you know, during the year and, you know, throughout. So the retrograde, the, the next retrograde cycle is between August the 20th at 14 degrees Taurus and January the 1st at 10 degrees Taurus 2022. Now the first point of the squaring aspect that we are experiencing um, will be February the 17th. Now with that, we will already have Mercury retrograde in Aquarius. 
it would by mid-January we will be having those shadow aspects plus Uranus and Taurus is in shadow cycle so it can be again pretty much anywhere from the first till the 14th and the 17th there can be sudden changes and difficulties when it does come to Aquarius and Taurus placements. Now the second part of Uranus and Taurus squaring Saturn will be on June the 14th. Now Saturn and Aquarius will be retrograde from May the 23rd till October the 11th. We also will have Jupiter in shadow during this time um, moving into retrograde into Pisces by June the 20th. Uh, by this point, prior to the squaring aspect occurring with both Uranus and Taurus and Saturn and Aquarius, we would have had the annular solar eclipse, the new moon in Gemini at 19 degrees. And we also have Pluto in Capricorn retrograde between April the 27th and October the 6th at 24 degrees Capricorn. So, you know, with this phase during, during the 14th, you can find, find, again, major themes to do with the eclipse can be cycling. And that's due to the fact that we have the North Node in Gemini. And this is a brand new moon, so it will be an ending and a new beginning. When it comes to Jupiter, the reflection state and the shadow cycle of that uh, will be moving into effect. So we'll already be feeling that by this point, by the time we have Uranus and Taurus squaring um, Saturn and Aquarius. And on top of that, just to make things really, really nice, uh, we would have already had Saturn retrograde. So it's the reflection time. It's the, the frustration of, um, okay, where had we, hadn't we taken accountability when it relates to the Aquarius placement? Is it something financial? Is it something in a value system spiritually? Uh, however it's playing out, I'll link it to you once I finish these three aspects, we will discuss you know, how this is going to affect us all. Okay, now December 24th, we do have Uranus and Taurus squaring Saturn and Aquarius. Now, there are major themes on this month occurring that will directly kind of impact this one zone. So we do need to look at those before we do look at Uranus and Taurus squaring um, Saturn and Aquarius. Now, number one, Uranus and Taurus will still be retrograde, and that's until January 2022. It went retrograde August the 20th at 14 degrees Taurus until, as I mentioned, January 2022. We also, on the 4th of December, had a solar eclipse, new moon in Sagittarius. So it's an ending in one domain and a brand new beginning in another. The other area we need to be mindful of is that Aries and Chiron is stationary direct. It should still be in shadow. Uh, by this time, it went direct as of the 19th, but there still can be, you know, this lag and recuperation that we're trying to get. On top of that, we have the sun in Capricorn. So yeah, really having to look at that accountability within our lives, utilizing that energy that we had at the beginning of the year and looking at things um, to do with our accountability, showing up, it can be government related dynamics, but the accountable energy um, and going back to that foundational level. Mars also is gonna be in Sagittarius. So both with the eclipse and with Mars, it's really pushing towards those new Jupiter energies in a very unique way. Now, Aquarius is the polarity of the collective. It's the um, <clears throat> it's the person that understands, or energy rather, we should say. It's the collective energy um, that will be coming through. But it's the humanitarian. Um, it's groups forming. It's the people, so to speak. So wherever it's falling in your chart, it's going to be deeply important. Now, Uranus and Taurus. Um, understands the requirements for the structures, uh, but also is understanding the necessity for change when it does come to Uranus and Taurus. So we need a balance of both worlds, but there can be complications surrounding those energies. And as Uranus and Taurus goes direct, um, and it kind of matches because we'll have Venus retrograde in Capricorn, the sun in Capricorn, putting your energy into that to make these things happen. Mars and Sagittarius, uh, the solar eclipse that occurred, which was a new moon, and for the next six months we can have activations in that point, plus Uranus and Taurus squaring 
on the 24th. So do expect either side and pretty much the entirety of the month, you know, being prepared, looking at those placements, working on those areas. So then it, when it does come to the squaring aspects, you're in alignment. Now, sudden changes can happen with placements linking to Uranus and Taurus, and it can be instantly. Now, this can happen anytime either side of this month due to the fact that A, uh, the, the energy of it squaring is occurring on the 24th, but because it's retrograde, any inklings you have, <clears throat> and I'll name the dates again, between August the 20th, be prepared. Start looking at those things that need changing. Yes, sudden changes may have happened around then. It can give you an idea as to what can be coming up right now and start implementing them before that time. Really use those times in the retrograde effect to implement those changes of where those, you know, tension points were in life so that when it does come to that point, you know, you're not going to have a very tense Christmas. Now, because we're having Aries and Chiron direct, Yes, our wounds are relating to an area, but we can't allow our wounds to stand in our way. And it's beneficial that it's direct. Um, we can have a little bit more energy moving out of our way, so to speak. That's why it's there for, you know, for the seven years is to help us develop that. But looking at the key themes of both Taurus and Aquarius to get the best out of it and trying to find the yin and yang. Now, Taurus collectively can relate to land, agriculture, um, beauty, uh, our finances, um, food, resources, and Aquarius is the wider group energy of the people. Uh, again, it can be um, institutions, it can be viewpoints, it can be value systems, um, helping one another, sometimes to the detriment of ourselves. So it's going to be this fine line and, you know, even moving into the beginning of 2021, really adjusting to that and the benefit will be that um, you know, we'll have that pocket time to kind of ease into it, but it can feel a bit like it's thrown upon us. So bear in mind, there can be tension points there. Any themes that come up around August, pay very close attention. Fine tune them, move them so that you're protected. I'd probably say if you want to store, um, you know, get your Christmas presents in order well and truly before the end of the year. Start, you know, paying for those things uh, little by little so that it's not going to agitate the apple cart. Uh, that can be wherever again, which I will um, talk about for your zodiac signs during the year and inside this video um, separately where we can discuss what can be coming up for you. Okay, Scorpio, let's have a look at your placement for Uranus and Taurus. Now, on February the 17th, we have the connection of the square occurring between your fourth house of Aquarius and your seventh house of marriages, contracts, partnerships of Taurus. Now, this theme of Taurus will be coming up all year for you. So there can be a lot of changes. We also, with Black Moon and Lilith, need to face our shadow inside those things. But when it comes to home and um, your work, the people you're surrounded with, there can be tension on this day, especially when it does come to the bigger picture of, you know, family-related dynamics. Um, this squaring point also, you've pretty much got two weeks moving into January. And the reason I say that is because by mid-month, we're going to have Mercury going stationary retrograde. So when it comes to anything analytical relating to the home-related dynamic, paperwork, getting your routine in order, getting organized. You need to really be doing that because cognitively speaking, when it does come to those ventures relating to home, your daily routine, there can be a tension point there. So just bear that in mind. Also, when it does come to signing documents or anything house related, get those things done by the second week of January, 2021. Because these things, if they're not, there can be a window pocket during that time with Mercury retrograde, and it's retrograde until February the 21st. So you can find things coming to the surface um, that you didn't know. Expenses, for instance, coming up. You can be, um, you know, dealing with um, additions and transformations or needing to move and trying to find lease. So, you know, that pocket of time, there can be delays and frustrations, but as it moves direct, you can get benefits from that fourth house placement. Now, both Saturn and Jupiter are in the fourth house, so it can be really, although Saturn is squaring Uranus and Taurus, Jupiter is still going to be there. 
so it can be very um something becoming quite large you know uh larger than what what you think it is and a lot more responsibility so bear that date in mind now the next point is on june the 14th now the squaring aspects as i mentioned are still going to be between the fourth and the seventh house placement your daily routine your psychological foundation domestic um situations you know how you're living with the people you're living with um, it can also be, you know, commuting to work, whether you're working from home or working with, um, at a, a different location and, and trying to be organized during that time. Plus with all your connections, your workplace. Um, again, there can be tension points with that. And during this point, June 14th, Saturn in Aquarius will be retrograde. So deep highlights to do with home related dynamics can be causing tension when it does come to your work, your routine, your love life, the people you're interconnecting with, the luxuries. Um, but it can be a lot of reflection that you're doing in that energy. Also, around this time, we're having Jupiter in shadow, getting ready to go retrograde by the 20th. By this point, it will be in shadow. So you will be feeling that Pisces energy coming through. And that can be anything to do with your romance, children, luck, creative endeavors. And it can also be hunch energy. So pay attention to this point. Um, child related dynamics schooling what else can I say um, and another area is particularly if you're not satisfied with your workplace or a situation playing out in your life it can almost feel like a Venus retrograde that's really what I'm getting but very separately if you are assessing during this time and you feel something's really got to come to an end and it's got to transform to that Pisces energy uh, what you'll find is in 2022, Jupiter is going to be in Pisces. So themes around this time, which I did mention previous in the transit, Jupiter transits, pay attention to that. That time frame is going to give you a window pocket with Jupiter retrograde of what 2022 is going to look like. So pay attention to the themes, journal them down. And, you know, when it does go direct, then what you can do is change things about to get the best outcome. So you'll be doing two things. You'll have the element of Aquarius and the element of Pisces. And it's going to give you the yin yang of, okay, if you're wanting this, what is the hope and dream and what would you need to shift to get that done? Where are you on a mission and where does it need to shift so that you can get what you want? 2022 can be really great if you are tapping into uh, your creative pursuits, a hobby, um, you know, luxury related items, marketing, advertising, and doing that from home, especially with the fourth house placement. So it's about looking outside the box, you know, and it doesn't have to be that you are working from home. For many of you, uh, there's this push pull dynamic and it is going to be really busy this year so it's about trying to find that balance Saturn's bringing you in to take that responsibility at times when it does come to connections and external situations definitely pay attention to Mars Mars will be the things that will be coming up on where you're needing to focus as well as the North Node now June the 14th also we would have already had the solar um, eclipse new moon in Gemini at 19 degrees so the themes playing out around the square are also coming up very much connected to tax debt um, Pluto related dynamics births deaths endings the bounce back um, you know looking at those things it's a new moon so it's okay what do we need to change with that position of Gemini when it does come to the finances the money the shared resources and this can be linking to your employment you know what's in it for me is there something coming out of it you can actually get a pay rise during this time or it could be something to the degree um, that you've completed a task you're transforming this situation let me quickly look June okay leo will be in that placement at that time for you and i don't know why i felt it important to mention it for you let's have a look at your chart okay career sector there you go pay attention what's coming up for you during this time are you getting enough out of it this this is a time between um june it's going to be in leo and then it will transit it'll be there from june the 11th so even starting before this transit of the squaring aspect I mean uh, through to July the 29th so very much highlighted for you is your career sector and you really do need to focus on it during this time to get everything in order 
eighth house placement can be your paperwork, your documentation, um, you know, checking your policies, doing your tax, uh, and also assessing where you're at with it. So have a look at that. And last but not least, on the 14th, you do have Pluto in Capricorn retrograde, and it will be till October the 24th. And it it's in Capricorn, so again, third house, communication, information, um, really needing to look over that paperwork, very similar to the eighth house placements. So pay attention to that. Does something need to come to an end? Are you going to wait till you know you know it's it's called upon you, or are you going to take the bull by the horns and and make those changes, whatever that be for you? Now December is the last squaring aspect, and that's on the twenty fourth. So we're sure to have a very interesting Christmas at this point with the squaring aspect between. Uranus and Taurus and Saturn and Aquarius, it's still the same placements, the fourth and the seventh house. During this time, however, it's very focused on your marriages, contracts, partnerships. And it can be a time of confusion, reflection, um, looking at those things that need changing due to the fact that Uranus and Taurus is retrograde till 2022. Now, it would have gone retrograde by August. So anything relating to your marriages, contracts, partnerships, if you hadn't tied them up, it can start to become quite karmic. Um, as long as they're in alignment when it does come to your money, um, being in the job that you so desire. You know, alignment is, um, it's, it's tough work uh, doing those things. It, it's not that it has to be something terrible, but it can be that there can be tension point in that domain when it comes to, um, money, luxuries, finances, agriculture, um, can even be because it's home related, land, you know, um, insurances and things to that degree. We have also, the eclipse would have occurred on the 4th prior to the 24th, which is the squaring. Now it was a solar eclipse, new moon in Sagittarius. We also have Aries and Chiron going stationary direct on the 19th and on the 19th also we have Venus um, retrograde and it's going to be in Capricorn so let's talk about this number one the new energy coming in for you over the next six months will link to your second house this can be your income it can be the way you're generating things your net worth value if you've been working really hard you know you're reaping these rewards i would strongly suggest when it does come to um, christmas and things to that degree paying attention to your finances but definitely getting those presents bought well and truly before christmas because with venus retrograde number one we will have situations from the past coming back look at january and let it guide you for the end of the year because we'll have capricorn energy back again and close out those cycles make sure you've tied up those loose ends also with the south node it will be transforming throughout the year so during venus retrograde capricorn is going to be in view this can be technology um, it can be communication the accountability inside of those things it can be needing to get new devices uh, you're better to wait till January 2022 uh, when it does come to anything um, third house placement. It can also be issues with vehicles. Um, again, with communication, communication can be coming in, blasts from the past, um, situational ships and crosswise. Venus can be initially the good, the bad, then the really ugly, buyer's remorse, so to speak. So tying yourself into a contract this late in the point is probably not a great idea. You're better to wait till after, which is January 2022, probably into the first week, two weeks, where you'll have more clarity, but there can be sudden changes that happen around that time, really relating to that Taurus placement. That can be with your contracts going to that next level. And Uranus and Taurus is like a box of chocolates, and it's going to be there for a while. So... That playing out can be a tension point on the 24th, uh, but it's it's not there to punish you, it's there to show you something so you can transform. Uh, Uranus wants to liberate you, Saturn wants you to take accountability, and there's really that fine line between those situations, home-related dynamics, uh, you know, the, the connections that we hold and trying to make everyone happy, because Aquarius is very much about the people, the bigger picture. So pay attention to that. Jupiter will be direct 
Um, it's also moving into Pisces around this time. So again, fifth house placement. Things to do with romance, children can be coming up at this time, but it can be also a beautiful point in the year. Now I'm only going to briefly touch on Pluto in Capricorn because it is sort of counteracted by Saturn and Jupiter. So it will ease up. We have had a lot of heavy placements. Now January can be a large point of this and December because we have a lot of placements there. Plus when the retrograde effects happens, I check in with you month by month and I do give you the daily updates. Now the direct cycle will be from January the 1st at 24 degrees Capricorn. Uh, and we're having a Mercury retrograde uh, shadow period by mid-month. So that can be anything Aquarian related, what we need to tie up, miscommunication crosswise. But anything relating to those loose ends, get paperwork done um, in the first two weeks. And you pretty much got through to April 27th. Now by April, anything relating to that Capricorn placement um, there can be reflection upon those things, refinement, and that will be from April the 27th at 26 degrees. The higher in the degree point it gets, the more critical the aspect. We're doing 24, you know, um, and zero. There's certain critical degree points that can be pretty harsh. So retrograde as of April the 27th through to October the 6th at 24 degrees Capricorn. Then from October the 6th, through to January 1st, it will be direct and it goes retrograde again, 2022. Okay, Scorpio, now Capricorn has been hitting your third house placement. There may have been a lot of responsibility when it came to commuting, moving, uh, communicating, dealing with situations um, at an obligationary level. That should ease off. Now, even car related dynamics, you know, dramas with vehicles and things to that degree, that tension point can be taken off that placement, especially when it links to throat chakra activation. Now, Pluto subjects can come up at the beginning of the year, especially because we're gonna have different placements there. It can really be activating that. Okay, what do we need to let go of? Um, can we transform this? Talking through things. Uh, can be your uh, short journeys and you know fine tuning life to ease situations up with you looking at your routine with that now that can be coming up at the beginning of the year as well as during Pluto in Capricorn retrograde mid-year and yes you can have again third house placement you can have make sure your services are done make sure that your insurances are up to date because it is third house placement uh, but yeah, there can be subjects surrounding that and new things coming through because we do also have fourth house of accommodation changes and it is growing and beautifying this year for you in 2021 and beyond. Uh, the other point to remember is by the end of the year, we are going to have uh, Venus retrograde in Capricorn. So it can be very Pluto in energy as well, although it's the seventh house placement. Uh, you know, looking at those things and going, okay, how, how do I deal with X, Y, and Z? Venus is the good, the bad, the ugly. It can be old situations coming back from the past. Again, pay attention to third house placement with these things. Technology can break. Um, assessing your value systems with them. Okay, do I replace it? Do I not? Uh, and yet again, we'll check during the year. But regardless, Pluto transits and Capricorn has been heavy for you communication, daily routine, driving, commuting. That should ease off now because we have both Saturn and Jupiter there. Okay, let's have a look at Neptune and Pisces. Two things to mention before I get into the dates of the directs and the retrogrades is I will mention the astrology during the month, how these things are playing out for you uh, week by week as well as Jupiter is going to be transiting mid-year into Pisces. So this will be a double whammy for Neptune and Pisces. We're also going to have, let me have a look at the charts for Mars. Okay, more towards October and December, there can be these things coming up, but let's have a look at the dates. Now on January the 1st, we will have um, Neptune direct until June the 25th at 23 degrees Pisces. Its retrograde date is June the 25th till the 1st of December. So there can be deep reflection 
in this area, which again, I do remember we do have Neptune, oh, not Neptune, Uranus and Taurus squaring Saturn and Aquarius around that time. So it'll be retrograde till then going stationary direct. And again, it can be sometimes um, quite slow moving. So any of those areas that maybe you haven't launched, transform, change, or the house that it's linking to, which I'll talk about shortly, it, you know, there can be tension points there. Now it will be um, pretty much direct from the beginning of December through till the end of this year into 2022, and it'll be at 20 degrees Pisces. Let's have a look at the placements. Okay, Scorpio, Neptune and Pisces can be linking to um, children, uh, romance, luck, creative endeavors, it's a bit luxuries. Now, there's going to be an interesting transformation in this domain for two reasons. One, it can be you seeing a situation very differently. Um, that can be to do with these areas, to do with birthing, creativity, um, any of those things. As well as, as we have the retrograde effect, you can be reflecting upon these things. Now, very separately, we do have Jupiter mid-year transiting into Pisces also. So it can be very much linking to our dreams, um, our delusions, our illusions, the truth, subjects coming to the forefront, something that was hidden from us. Uh, and very separately, because Jupiter is transiting into the fifth house, what the growth in that domain can be and how to achieve that. Now we can then link back to Aquarius and say, okay, where are we on point with that? If we're wanting that in 2022, what would we need to do to shift that? And if those hopes and dreams are relevant to us, are we on point and are we taking steps forward to achieve such? Okay, let's have a look at Mercury retrograde. Now, Mercury is going retrograde three times this year. And some of these subjects we need to look at because they're going to highlight different places of our chart. It will be direct from the 1st of January until mid-month. Now, we're going to get that shadow cycle and it's going to be in the house of Aquarius. Now, this is going retrograde as of the 30th, but mid-month you can feel some of those shadow aspects. So it will be pretty much from January the 30th at 26 degrees Aquarius, retrograde until February the 21st at 11 degrees. Now, that's most of February. So if there's anything paperwork related or wherever that falls in your house, um, pay attention to that retrograde cycle and it can cause some frustration. Now, from there, it will be direct from February the 21st, 11 degrees Aquarius, until May the 29th at 24 degrees Gemini. Now, a lot of subjects relating to Gemini will come up during the next retrograde cycle, and that is between May the 29th, 24 degrees Gemini, and remember we've got the North Node in Gemini, until September the 27th, 25 degrees Libra. Okay, from that point we have the direct motion and that will be from October the 18th, 10 degrees Libra until January 2022, 28 degrees Capricorn. So a lot more Capricorn themes coming up in January 2022. So what themes can be coming up? Now the first retrograde is Aquarius energy. Pay attention to that cycle between January and February. The next retrograde is between May and June, and it's in the house of Gemini. This, the third one is between September and October, and it's in the house of Libra. So again, I will talk about this for your zodiac sign. Food for thought, remember these dates. Now, the first Mercury retrograde phase is happening by mid-January. Now, this will be subjects relating to home. This can be your, any domestic situations, crosswise. Again, remember, Mercury can make things busier. So you may find the home environment can be super busy. Anything connecting to, um, you know, documents, getting your policies in order, getting your house in order. It can be a very, um, like I said, busy, confusing time. Signing of documents, wait till after the fact. If you can get it done, get it done prior to the Mercury retrograde. If you are doing anything um, in a sense of renovating, moving, shifting, there can be tension points there. It's not that it won't be successful. It'll just be um, a little bit more agitational. So make sure you keep your receipts, make sure you keep your cool, and it will go direct by the 
21st of February. Okay, the next transit is occurring in Gemini. Now, this will be subjects relating to deeper intimacy and connections, shared resources, uh, deep reflection on these. Uh, great time to update policies can be things um, from the eighth house placement, like repairs needing done. But this can also be taxation documents and paperwork. So, you know, again, if you can get those things done prior, um, it'll give you the beauty of a reflection of it. Some old things, if you're doing it in the midst of that, yes, there can be complications. The next Mercury retrograde phase is moving through Libra, and this is your 12th house. It's a good time around this transit to take time for self. Also, if you do feel things are coming up psychologically, it's a good time to actually, you know, reach out and get some help to remove that as an obstacle in your life. You can have wonderful creative ideas. Uh, you do tend to be quite spiritual and psychic. It could be a good time to journal, but again, there can be a lot more frustrations psychologically during that Mercury retrograde. Okay, Scorpio, we do not have a Mars retrograde this year. Are we happy? Yes. Okay, now Mars was hitting your second house placement. That may have been anything relating to land, your professional resources, self-esteem, uh, your net worth, your income. Now that is set to have pressure taken off it. If there was concerns and frustration, there can be transformations happening. And that can be from January onwards due to the fact we have Mars transiting Taurus. Now high subjects relating to your marriages, contracts, partnerships, this can even be employment. Um, and any Venus related dynamics can be with you in the house of Mars until March the 3rd. From March the 3rd, you may be looking at taxation, documents, legacies, wills, inheritances, and deep intimacy. From April the 23rd until June the 11th, you can be looking at higher education, subjects to do with your siblings, moving, um, the bigger picture, dealing with foreign countries and foreigners. Now, from April the 23rd till June, the 11th that energy will resonate from june the 11th we have it transiting your 10th house placement this can be a very high focus on employment work be it you're employed or not and really shifting it into high care in this domain you can achieve a lot more with the energy providing you're pouring that energy into it effectively now that can be there until July the 29th. Now on July the 29th, it's transiting over to your 11th house until September the 14th. This can be a lot of socialization, bringing groups together. It can be, um, you know, attempting to build that bridge within our community, be it it's at work, be it it's in our friendship groups. This can be your hopes, dreams, aspirations, pouring that energy into that domain. And that will be till September the 14th, where it shall then transit into Libra, which will be a great time to, again, try and get grounded, change things up a bit. Is there something happening, you know, internally, psychologically that's coming up? Is there something that's coming up and it's stressing you due to an environment? You know, dealing with those things, um, trying to get your head clear. This can be a really great time for guided meditation, but because it's Mars, there can be subjects that you're really battling with. Um, even if it is a creative project and you're trying to bring it through to the 3D or you need to share something and get it off your chest. So between September the 14th and October the 30th, it's a good time to clear thy mind. October the 30th through till December the 13th is transiting your first house and this can be okay where do I stand in the matrix how am I showing up in life subjects to do with your demeanor how you're showing up you can be more assertive during this time and more vigorated and that can be through till December the 13th then your second house placement is highlighted by the end of the year moving into January 22 and this can be subjects relating to your income source, your okay. self-esteem, um, your net worth value, you know, taking stock of what you've achieved in 2021. Stay tuned for the transits during the month. I still do updates week by week and think subjects can really shift depending on the other aspects. 
Last points, Venus retrograde. Now that is occurring December the 19th until January the 1st. The other point I do want to mention is Chiron and Aries. Now that retrograde is occurring from July the 15th at 12 degrees Aries until December the 19th, 8 degrees Aries. So pay attention to those times. You can feel a little bit fatigued during that time and irritable linking to the 8th house. But because we have Mars transiting other signs, um, subjects relating to Sagittarius will come up towards December due to the fact we have the eclipse. Okay, as for your eclipse dates, we have the eclipse in May the 26th, a total lunar eclipse, which is a full moon in Sagittarius at 5 degrees. We then have an eclipse in June 10th, which is an annular solar eclipse, new moon in Gemini at 19 degrees. And then November the 19th, it's a partial lunar eclipse, full moon in Taurus at 27 degrees. And then finally, in December on the 4th, we have a total solar eclipse, which is a new moon in Sagittarius at 12 degrees. Again, I will follow these live for all your up-to-date information and energy relating to the astrology. So if you have listened through this far, thank you very much. Take care, beautiful. So I'll see you soon. Again, if you do want to book in, the link is below. I'll see you during all the super chats and the live updates during the month. And we'll check in at the next stop to see how your zodiac sign's going. Love and light, guys. See you soon.